Hey, what if I told you that I know how to spot the exact bottom down to the very exact scent and I can show you how to do it too. Truth is, if I tell you that or anyone else tells you that, they're full of shit because it's literally impossible. There's too many factors at play. However, what if I told you that I can show you how to spot when the market is taken off from the bottom? Now that's super doable. And as you'll see here, it's actually really, really simple to do and it's not complicated at all. So in this video, we're gonna dive into some charts and I'm gonna show you what a trend is, how to identify a trend. We're gonna go over what a trend reversal is and how to spot trend reversals as well as how to spot a breakout pattern using technical analysis on multiple charts. As you'll see, this doesn't just work on crypto, it works on crypto, equities, Forex, doesn't matter. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you my opinion on when I think the market's gonna bottom, taking into account a lot of data from major financial institutions that can actually move the market. Now, before we get into this video, I have to say it. Sorry guys, this is not financial advice. Please consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. This video is for your education purposes only. And as always, do your own research. So without further ado, let's dive into the content. Okay, so here we are on TradingView. So to start, I want to make this video as simple as I possibly can. The market at all times, no matter what chart you're looking at, is only doing one of three things. I'm going to show you that right now. The first thing is, it's either in an uptrend, creating higher highs and higher lows, so you have a low here, then you have a higher low, right? And then you have a high here and a higher high. So that's one thing that the market can be doing. It can be in a downtrend when it's creating lower, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower highs, right? So you have a high here, and then you have a high here that's lower, and you have a low here, and you have a low here that's lower, right? So that's the second thing that it can be doing, uptrend or downtrend, or it can be moving in consolidation, which is this choppy sideways action that we've kind of been in for the last few months, right? Three things the market can be doing at all times, in an uptrend, in a downtrend, or in consolidation, simple as that. Also, before we move on, let me just give you a quick 30 second rundown on how to read candles and what they mean. When you're looking at a candle, if the candle is green, and this goes for the monthly time frame, which is what we're on right now, the weekly time frame, the daily, the four hour, it doesn't matter. When you're looking at a candle, if the candle is green, that means the market closed higher than it opened on that time frame, right? So this is a monthly chart. And this candle right here is from March of 2021. So in March, let's say March 1st, the market opened here, Bitcoin was 45,000. And at the end of the month, it closed at 58,000. So it closed higher than it opened, which is a green candle, right? Now, what you might be asking, okay, what are the wicks? The wicks just show how far the market went up and how far the market went down within that time frame. Okay, so we have this candle here. It opened here and it closed here, but throughout that time frame, which is this month, the market went way up here and it also went down here to where this wick is, okay? And that's how all the candles are connected. It opened here, it closed here. So if it closed here, it had to open right here. And this is why you see gaps on like S&P and different equity charts because that market isn't 24 seven, right? So it, it opened here, it closed here. So it has to open here and close somewhere else, right? And that's what connects all these candles. And the same thing and the same thing for a red candle. If the candle is red, no matter what time frame it's on, that means the market closed lower than it opened. So this red candle, the market opened here and it closed here. Okay, so now let's find let's let's look at an uptrend. Here's an uptrend right here. We have a low, then we have a high right here. Then we have a low, then we have a high, higher low. Now, this was an uptrend, but now Bitcoin's been in a downtrend because we have a high here. Now we have another low, then we have another high. So this identifies a trend reversal. When this high didn't come back up as high as this high, that confirms that the trend is reversing. Right? So we have a high here and a low here. Then we have a lower high and now we have a lower low. So now you know how to spot uptrends and downtrends. And this is the same thing on ETH as well. You have a, a low here, then you have a high, then another low, then another high. The trend reversed at this point right here because this high is lower than this high. And now we have another lower, lower low here, which is lower than this low downtrend. And now let's identify some consolidation. So here's some consolidation here. The market isn't creating lower highs or lower lows or higher highs or higher lows. It's just chopping sideways, just like it was here, right? So when I do my technical analysis, I like to look at the macro and then look at the micro. I'm a swing trader. I look at long-term time purpose. So whenever I'm doing my technical analysis, I want to get the long-term trend and then start to narrow it down. So whereas when you're looking at a monthly chart, this candle 
represents one month. But if you look at a weekly chart, now you have to split this candle into four and it adds more candles in it. So on and so forth when you go to the day chart and the four hour. The last time frame that I stop on is the four hour. I don't go any lower than the four hour. So now that we understand uptrends, downtrends, and consolidation, let's get to the reason that you clicked on this link to watch this video. How to spot a trend reversal to verify that the market is taking off from the bottom. Okay, so like I said in the beginning of the video, you can never spot the bottom. Yeah, you can get lucky. It is possible that you bought Bitcoin at its absolute low of last cycle at 3,200 or whatever it is. But the chances of that happening is very unlikely. What you want to do is spot when the market is leaving out of consolidation or is reversing from a downtrend to an uptrend, okay? And this strategy applies for any time frame. But like I said, I like to look at the long-term chart first and then go down from there. So how do you determine that the market is leaving the bottom, right? Like I said, you can't determine the bottom, but you can determine a trend reversal because we just, like we just said, the market is only doing three things at one time and three things alone, uptrend, downtrend, or consolidation. That's it. You can look at this chart and that's all you see. You see some consolidation here. You see an uptrend. You see a downtrend. You see consolidation. You see a little uptrend. Again, when you're looking at the month chart, you may not see all the higher highs and all the higher lows because you have five months represented in just five candles. So sometimes you have to go to the week chart so you can see the peaks and the troughs. We have consolidation here, uptrend, downtrend, more consolidation. So if I were looking at this, this is how you can confirm it. And when I say confirm, it's never going to be 100% sure. But whenever you're investing or trading, you want to think in probabilities and what the most probable outcome is. Because if you place your bet on the most probable outcome and you do that for years and years, that's how you're pretty much guaranteed to win long term. Obviously, you have to take into account risk management and make sure you're not over leveraging or anything like that. So right here, we saw Bitcoin consolidating for months. Well, for years, actually. We saw the 2017 uh, rally come to an end, and we pretty much consolidated within this channel from February 2018 until September of 2020. So if we look at, let's start off with this one. So if we look at this, we see the market consolidating, right? Rule, no retest, no entry. You have what's called support and resistance. Resistance is a ceiling, and support is a floor. And you can put lines on the chart, and you can see it likes to break through a ceiling and come back and test it as a floor when it's, when it's going in an uptrend, right? You saw it break this ceiling here and test it as support. And the same thing on the downside. It likes to break the support and turn that support into resistance. So turn a floor into a ceiling on a downtrend. So we saw on this downtrend, it broke here and it came back up and retested. it. You can't see the retest because this one candle represents a month. But if you zoom out on the weekly, you'll see it and I'll show you here. But this is what you do. The market's consolidating. And then we saw here it broke out of the support. It broke out of the resistance and came back down to test it as support. And then the moment I like to get in is when I see a nice fat green candle being printed to get into a long position. So what you saw here, you saw the market come up, come back down, test this support as resistance, and then now you have a trim reversal. And I got, I would have gotten in right on this nice big green candle because that's saying like, hey, we have momentum, we have volume coming in, and the trend's likely to continue in that direction. Now you have some people who are greedy who are like, well, what if you could have got in right here right, right when it broke out? Well, look at how many times price broke out, but it came back down. Like, if you'd have took that strategy, you would have gotten to a long position and you would have been waiting from June of 2019 all the way until October of 2020. So that's why you want to wait until that nice candle prints, right? And this happens like 99% of the time. Even right here, you saw a consolidation and you saw the market break and retest a nice big green candle. And had you got in after this candle, all the way to the top of that little mini cycle is 144%. It's not bad. So now just let me zoom out just so that you can see this on another chart because it's, it's easier to see the more you zoom out. But you, like I said, you want to start out, zoomed out, and then zoom in so that you can get the macro picture and kind of narrow yourself down. So you see the consolidation here and you saw the break and then you saw this nice big green candle and that's where you could have got in. And even here, look at how clean this is. The market broke above this, our resistance came back down, tested as support, I would have gotten in on this candle right here, this nice big green candle. And had you did that, you could have gotten yourself over 400% gains off of just trading the breakout. 
You know, this isn't complicated stuff. Let's look at it on another chart. Another thing on the retest, it doesn't have to touch the exact line. I like to look at this line as a zone and I make it thin so that I can see all the wicks, right? So even though it doesn't come back down and touch the line, it's still a good confirmation. We saw consolidation from August of 2018, consolidation, consolidation, and then we have our breakout. Look, we have a breakout. And remember, I like to wait until I see a nice fat candle going into the direction of the trend that I'm betting in. So this, that's this candle right here. Because had you gotten this one, you have, you have had to wait from August to November. Like, no, you just be patient. Wait for the nice green candle. Yeah, you sacrifice making an extra 30% or whatever it is. But look at your upside. You could have rolled, you could have rolled ETH had you got in on this nice big green candle from $572 all the way to $4,390. Obviously, you're not going to get in at the top and you want to have prices set up to where you know what price points you're gonna get out. Like you don't wanna leave it up to your emotions because you'll always be like, oh, it's probably gonna keep going up. Let's keep drilling this point home. Same thing here with Chainlink. We saw consolidation, consolidation. And again, you wanna wait for the breakout because had you got in here, you actually would have lost money because it went right back down. But if you look here, we saw the market come back up, come back down and right here at this nice fat green candle, you would've got in, you would've got Chainlink at $7.22 and you could've rode it all the way up to $52. And let me go down one more time frame so you can see it a lot clearer. It's kinda like an eagle flying over to hunt its prey. Like it flies really, really high to give it a bird's eye view they have really, really good vision. And then once they spot a fish, they get closer down and then they plan their attack strategy and they go into the water and they grab it. It's the same thing here. You're looking up high for opportunities. When you see one, you look like, oh, that looks like it could be a breakout. You go down to the next time frame. You're like, oh, let me go down a little more. And then eventually you'll be able to see the trend clear. So here we are on Chainlink zoomed in. So I'm glad I saw this because this is this is something you can learn from. And again, this, this isn't going to be 100% of the time. But I said I want to wait for a nice big green candle. So you might be thinking like, oh, what about this green candle here? It's on the retest, right? So the market broke and then retest, but it dropped down again. And we're on the daily chart, right? So you can see exactly what's going on. So you wanna wait till it breaks above and then retest with a green candle. You're not waiting for a breakout green candle. This one just broke, broke out, right? But this one here, we saw a break and a retest. And again, like it doesn't have to happen immediately. Like if, if the market breaks this resistance and it turns it into support and it's consolidating on top of it, it's establishing that as strong support. That means people aren't willing to sell as much at this price point. It's a saying, the longer the base, the higher the chase. So the longer that a base is being built, AKA the longer the support is being established, resistance when it comes to the downside, the higher the chase, right? So this nice big green candle is where I would have gotten in right on the breakout. We saw the market come back up. We come, we saw it come down and retest not only our support line, but we saw it retest our 62 EMA. That's double confirmation. If now let's look at the total crypto market cap. Works here too. This is an index showing all the entire market cap of the entire crypto industry. So right here, we saw the market break and retest this as, as support. This is the perfect candle to get in. This nice big green candle, you could have rolled the market all the way up to a $2.5 trillion market cap. Let's see how that looks on the, the daily chart. Look at that, look at, how, look at how solid that is. If we zoom in here, we saw the market break, retest, retest, and like I said, the longer the base, the higher the chase. I would have gotten in, to be honest, you know, it, it, it's always gonna make more sense in hindsight, but I would have gotten in on this green candle here. If I'm trading with leverage, I'll have my stop loss around this area. It would not have gotten hit. Maybe here or maybe even here. All you have to do is be a little patient. And then a couple days later, boom, it's off to the races. Now let's look at the S&P. This goes back to 1999. We, are, we were consolidating within this channel and had a, a double top and a double bottom going from 2000 till 2013. That's pretty crazy. So you have these trends within the trend. And when you look at an index like the S&P that's been around for a long time, it might be helpful to look at a six month chart as well, or like a yearly chart. But same thing here. We saw the market consolidating, and then we saw a break, and we saw a retest, and again, if I zoomed out, we will see it a lot clearer, but I'm not gonna do it just because I will have to just keep scrolling back, and I'm trying to keep this video short. We saw a break, 
we saw a retest and it again it tested our 200 day moving average and then you got in at this nice big green candle you could have rolled the s p all the way up for a 205 percent gain over a few years it's two things you don't trade against you don't trade against the trend and you don't trade against the fed right the trend is your friend and the Federal Reserve, through raising and lowering interest rates, will control the risk-on, risk-off parameters for the top institutions. And that'll determine at which assets they're allocating themselves or they're exposing themselves to. If it's a risk-on environment, that's usually equities, crypto. If it's risk-off, treasuries, bonds, government debt, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's look at some individual equity plays. I just really want to drive this point home that this it doesn't matter what chart you're looking at. The same things are at play. Okay, so we're looking at Meta. We saw it consolidating from 2017 all the way up until pretty much 2020, just trading within this range. And then we finally saw price break out, come back down and retest it. It just looks like a breakout here because it's the month chart. But again, we got to zoom in a little bit so we can actually see that breakout, right? So here it is again. We saw the market consolidating, then we saw it break out, came back down and retest it, and then got, gave us our nice big green candle, right? And if we go down to the daily chart, you can see that retest a lot clearer, right? You didn't even have to wait till over here. You could have got in here, and you see this nice big green candle here? You could have got in right there a little earlier. And this is a time where it comes back down. This, is where, this, this isn't a bad idea to stack your trade. Because now we already got our break and retest. And then it came back down and retested our 62. That's a triple confirmation. And then you would have had a nice little long trade there. So look at Amazon. Same thing here. We see price consolidating within the zone. Gave us that nice fat green candle. Could have got in, rode it up for over a 50% gain. Not bad. I know it's not 400% gains like we're used to in crypto, but hey, it's still good. And then we have the market topping out here. And then we see a drop. And then we have a low. So we have this low that's lower than this low, right? And then we have a high. Here's another high too. So we have a high. Then we have a low, then we have a lower high, then a lower low, then another lower high, then a lower low. Just like you can stack in the trade because it retests off your 200 day, it's the same thing on the downside. It broke and it retested the trend line. I just don't, don't have it drawn here. And it also retested our 200 day moving average. So that's double confirmation on the short side. The same thing applies on the inverse. And let's look at one more equity chart just to drive the point home. We're looking at Google or Alphabet. We saw it consolidating after the dot-com crash, pretty much 2006 all the way up until 2012, right? We saw it, we get our break and we get our retest of our nice green candle. And if we go back on the weekly, you can see it a lot clearer. We have our break, we have our retest, and then you have, if you zoom in right here, it's a fat, nice fat green candle right here, and it retested the 62 EMA along with our support line, and you could have rolled that baby way on up. 700% gain over a few years, not bad. Let's look at some Forex charts before we wrap up here. Same thing, see the market consolidating, consolidating, and now we saw it break our support, come back up and test it as resistance, and it tested our 200 day and our 62 EMA. If you would have got in on this nice red candle, and again, you're gonna zoom out. So if we zoom out to the weekly, it's a lot easier to see. Like we saw our break, we got our retest, not got our candle here. Let's say you got in here, wrote that down for a nice 13% gain. Then we have the same thing here. Let me show you guys a trend reverse. So I just realized we haven't went over one of those yet. So let's say this trend is downward, right? Easy enough, you get it to where you can get the most touches. And then you have a high, lower high here, lower high here, and lower high here, a lower low, a lower low, a lower low, a lower low and the lowest of the lows. It's the same thing. You want to trade the breakout of a trend too, just like you want to trade the breakout of consolidation. So we saw this nice breakout here, right? But then we saw it come back down and test this as support. And it's near our 62 and our 200 day. Not only near it, but above it. And when it's above it, as you can see, it's a good sign of a trend reversal. The market's on top. It's usually a, a bull market, vice versa from the bottom. Had you got in on the retest, which is this nice big green candle here, you could have wrote this up for a nice 9% gain. I know it's not crazy, but for Forex traders, that's not the worst thing in the world. And then when you factor in leverage as well, obviously, depending on your leverage, you know, I used to do a strategy where I would use higher leverage, but use a smaller stop loss so I can increase my leverage without increasing my risk. That 9% can turn into 29%, depending on how you play it. Okay, so hopefully that was all simple and hopefully you know how to identify an uptrend, a downtrend, consolidation, a trend reversal, 
and how to verify with a high probability that the market is taken off from the bottom. Now, let me give you my opinion on when I think the market's gonna bottom, taking into account a lot of data from major financial institutions. Okay, so we're gonna go through a thread from uh, Zach, BTC Zach, shout out to Zach for aggregating all of this. He said he's read 5,397 pages from 12 financial institutions and their predictions. I've read most of this as well, but I did not read the whole thing. So I will give you the TLDR and just kind of go through this thread here. The first one is insight from UBS. It's an AI, it's an AI analysis and it's predicting bear scenarios for the first half of 2023 with the market bottoming in July. So before I continue, when these financial firms do these analysis on when they think the market's gonna do what, this is normally machine learning based. So they will put all of the financial data that they have going back 100 years, feed it into this machine learning, give it some filters, and then see what it produces. But you also wanna keep in mind that this is a once in a lifetime kind of event that we're going through. Like look at the, uh, we just went through a, a global pandemic, which happens every 100 years or so. We're at the end of the long-term debt cycle, so we need like a restructuring. We just printed more money than we've ever done in history in a matter of two years like more than we ever done throughout history combined. So with that kind of rocketing, the fall is gonna be that much further because you are you have so much higher to fall. So that's another thing you wanna keep in mind when you're looking at these machine learning data things. It would be different if this was year 5,020 when you have a lot of different pandemics and you know these kind of things to look at. So we only have financial data from like the last global pandemic. That's what we should be comparing it to. Okay, so we have scenario, the baseline scenario is like the most likely scenario. So they have it bottoming in July. Scenario two, that's saying inflation is sticky is it's a little harder to get under control. We did just have our third month of disinflationary or meaning that inflation has been consecutively going down. I do think we topped off with inflation. But another thing you got to keep in mind is the CPI doesn't factor in the real inflation. And then we have scenario three, which is rapid inflation with no recession. And that's really unlikely. Uh, most of the time when inflation's rap rampant and they have to get under control, there's always a recession after. Next one from Goldman Sachs. They also expect a decline in the first half of 2023, followed by a strong recovery later in the year. So they also have the market bottoming out in the summertime. It is good to take into account what these firms are saying because if they think the market's gonna bottom out in July and they start allocating capital in August, well, a rising tide raises all ships and you wanna ride the wave of these financial institutions because they're, they're gonna be the ones to raise the floor, right? Like I don't, I keep saying this, I don't think we'll ever see these prices again after we get out of this bear market and crypto specifically, right? Brand new asset class, and now we have all the mainstream institutions getting in as they were committed to their building this bear market, unlike how we saw in 2017 when they rolled back on their crypto initiatives. Like you have companies like Walmart filing patents in the metaverse. Visa is integrating with crypto more and more every day. We just heard about Amazon Web Services announcing a partnership with Avalanche. So it's a lot of things happening. Like it's, it's, it's different this time. And then let's go over BlackRock's TLDR for their playbook for 2023. They are in a risk off, damaged, not priced in. So they have the market sentiment, which is risk on, risk off. They're risk off. And then they have damage being priced in and the damage not being priced in. They don't think it has. And I don't think it has either. Like you have to keep in mind once Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers collapsed, we didn't see the market bottom until six, seven months after. Like when things are this big, there's normally a delay, right? Like these things just don't happen overnight. Like just like we printed all that money and we saw inflation top out six months to a year after, it's the same thing. They're raising interest rates. So we're going to see, like we've been raising rates all of last year, but we just in these past three months start to see inflation start to go down, right? And when that happens, that means the debt that these companies have been getting for cheap is increasing, right? So you have to go from spending more than you make to spending less than you make. And that represents a cycle in individuals and institutions. Their debt increases, they're gonna have, have to start laying off more people, which is why Federal Reserve wants to see unemployment increase, even though they won't say it because it sounds kind of bad, but they have to see that. Like all these things are lagging effects. And FTX, Three Arrows, Celsius, Voyager, all these firms that went down, that's also a lagging effect. I don't think the bottom is in. And yeah, everyone's excited about Bitcoin reaching back up to 21,000. 
I just think it's a bear market rally. But you know, I digress. Let's keep going. Let's look at what UBS thinks. UBS is a market bottom prediction framework tracks 17 key data points, including valuations, economic data, inflation, so on and so forth. They have a 75 plus percent hit ratio of the, of the criteria that's suggesting that the market is close to or has reached the bottom, currently at 59%, not quite there yet. So they have all these factors that gives it a turning point, but these red ones are the things that hasn't happened yet. Let's keep moving along. And here's, a, here's some more info. It looks into some averages. So the average bear market loss is 33.5%. The average bear market length is 355 days. An average return one year from the bottom is 43%. Today is the 368th day. So we're past the average bear market length. But like I said, this is a once in a lifetime kind of scenario that we're in. We printed all this money. So the fall is going to be more. It will be so weird unless they turn the money printers back on. Then it would make sense. It would be so weird if we bottomed out right now with all the money that we printed. And then we're only down 18% when the average bear market loss is 33.5%, right? So that makes sense. Like this all makes sense. And then he goes on to talk about the potential catalyst in 2023. So we have one of the catalysts is the Fed pausing rate hikes. Now, I'm going to elaborate on my thoughts on this one, but I'm a friend going over these. The end of the zero COVID policy in China and abating political risk. Now, one other catalyst that is, I think is going to be a catalyst in 2023 is buying ahead of the Bitcoin halving. It's usually a rally like a year or more or less before the halving. But as we've seen in the past, every halving that happens, more people find out about it and people start to buy Bitcoin earlier. So now I want to elaborate on this whole Fed pause in rate hikes. A lot of people aren't talking about this, but it's not only about them pausing rate hikes and they said that you know they have to get inflation under control and they have been sticking to their word which is something that the fed doesn't usually do but they know that they have to keep inflation under control so i think they're going to continue to hike rates but i think that once they stop hiking rates they're going to more aggressively start offloading assets from their balance sheet let's take a look at this so this is the united states central bank balance sheet and as you can see right now they have 8.5 trillion dollars on their balance sheet and they have to offload that so what happens is when the economy is in a crunch and they want to stimulate demand, they will buy assets from the Trouble Asset Relief Program, which is like bad debt, and they'll buy this directly from companies. So they'll take the bad debt off of companies' balance sheets or banks' balance sheets and give them fresh capital so they can lend and hire people and do things that will make the economy more productive. So you can see during 2008, the balance sheet increased 141%. And it kind of just been increasing ever so slightly since then. And then it started to taper down. And then 2020 happened. And we saw another 112% increase. So now we're trying to make our way down. But this needs to come back down like significantly. And the only way that's going to happen is if they're selling the bad debt that they bought. And what's going to happen when that happens? Well, supply and demand. Once you have an increase in supply coming onto the market with the demand that's the same or demand that's decreasing, you're going to see prices drop, which is going to lead to an even larger deleveraging. Deleveraging is the act of selling one's assets to cover one's debt. Once people know that the Fed is aggressively offloading assets from their balance sheets, if they have those same assets on their balance sheets, they're going to try to sell before the Fed. So everyone's going to be selling at the same time and it's going to create more contagion aka markets coming down further so a lot of people think oh just because the feds raising rates once they stop you know the market's going to turn bullish no they don't want to put the economy into a depression which means they're not going to aggressively raise rates and aggressively dump assets off their balance sheets at the same time so they're gonna have to do one another they've been raising rates once they stop i guarantee you they're going to start aggressively offloading assets from their balance sheets even more because this number has to come down before they start printing more money well, it doesn't have to, but it should. <laughs> so now, to answer the question, when do I think the market will bottom? I have no idea. I really don't. Yeah, I can say July just like the major institutions think, but they could be wrong too. And I don't have to know when it's going to bottom. All I have to know is how to spot a trend reversal. And I just showed you how to do that. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. I think the market's going to bottom when a trend reversal happens and we're going the other way. Then I'll be able to see where the bottom was. If you wanna know which altcoins I'm gonna be cycling into and why and when, and if you wanna know my leverage yield farming strategy, click the link in the description to fill out an application to apply to get into our Discord. I know I've been talking about know it outs for a while. We're just waiting on our website to be done and the Web3 components to be all connected, but we will be launching in the next month for sure. 
is going to be the best yield farming education platform out there. We're going to have some of the top yield farming coaches, yield farm with our members, and we're going to have the craziest gamification aspect about it. Like you guys just stay tuned, uh, get in the discord if you can. It's going to be a game changer. I can promise you that. So I love to meet you. I thank you so much for tuning in. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. We're trying to grow this channel and get this message out to the world. Share it with a friend. Let me know in the comment sections if you think I missed anything, what you want me to cover next, where I was wrong, et cetera, et cetera. I'm always open to constructive criticism and feedback. But with that, I thank you so much. I love every single one of you watching, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, so this is a few days later and you know, I was editing the video and I just like, man, you know, I can give you guys more value. It was some things that I wish I had said. So I'm just going to add it here on the end. So one thing I want to say is in addition to identifying a trend reversal, you want to have everything automated so you don't have to think with your emotion. You don't have to think. So basically what I'm saying is you want to be able to know when the trend is reversing, but you also want to be able to know when your thesis is being invalidated. So right here, if my thesis had been invalidated, that is saying, hey, the market came back in here and it closed back on the inside. So if it breaks back above, the retest doesn't count. It has to break back above and come back down. So that's one thing. The second thing is, you know, I was talking about how I feel like this is a bear market rally. It's a few days later, Bitcoin is now at 22,000. 22, uh, I just wanna share some info. This little pump is from short liquidations, right? It's not from actual spot buying volume, which is people buying on exchanges. And you can verify that by looking at the volume here. These few candles are the volume. This is the lowest volume we've seen in I don't know how long, but we, we're seeing this large pump. It's because shorts are getting liquidated. It's forced buying, okay? Don't be their exit liquidity is basically what I'm saying. Like in order to see a market bottom, big players have to go to zero. And it was just announced that Genesis is filing for bankruptcy as they have $150 million in the bank, all right? A Genesis and the Winklevoss twins have been going back and forth on Twitter and they're threatening them with a lawsuit if they don't give creditors a fair deal. So that is another thing to keep in mind, right? It would be extremely weird if we see a trend reversal when the biggest lender in all of crypto just filed for bankruptcy. Like, remember, I, I've been saying this for a long, for the longest. These kinds of things are lagging. So, Three Arrows, FTX, Voyager, Celsius, and now DCG going bankrupt. All of this stuff didn't even happen in the past six months. Like, we still have to give things time, okay? So, the powers that be, they want to pump the markets up so they can have someone to sell to once shit hits the fan again. Don't be their ex liquidity guys, please. I care about you guys, I really do, okay? And the last thing is why I think this is, where this is just a bear market bounce is because we are right on the cusp of earnings season. And you guys remember, I'll just show you on the chart. You remember what happened to Facebook when they announced their earnings and they were below, they had the largest dip in history. What do you think's gonna happen when that happens to Apple or Amazon? They're already doing massive layoffs, but I wanna show you guys even more data. This is uh, data on buybacks and dividends. We have been seeing record stock buybacks and dividends look at this quarter three buybacks highest we've ever seen in 2022 look at it here again boom buybacks and dividends all-time highs and this s p 500 dividends all-time highs if we go back to apple apple makes up most of the weight in the s p 500 and they are in the midst of one of the largest stock buyback programs in history right? And I've been talking to you guys about support and resistance this whole video. What does this look like here? This is a good shorting sign. Not yet, because we want to see that big red candle. Remember, you're going to wait. For, you want to see the retest and then the candle, because it can still go back up and into the zone. But it just broke the support, and now it's retesting as resistance. If we get a nice big red candle that closes, that's another thing I want to say. It has to close. It can't just be red, because it can easily go back green. It has to close on a large time frame. Now that's a good indicator for a short. This baby has to come way down because once earnings season comes around and they're not hitting their earnings because their Q4, I guarantee you, is not like their past few Q4s, right? That thing's gonna come tumbling down because they're, they're propping up the, the, the stock price by buybacks. Like all these corporations, money has been cheap for the past decade. And instead of taking that money and making their business better, some of them did, I guess, that money has been finding its way into assets and mainly into their own assets, meaning their their stock. They've been buying back their stock with their cash. So once that cash runs out and it's no more buyers to come in, what do you think is gonna happen to the price? 